Baptist Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from Bert Van Litt from Bothwell, Ontario. This Mass is offered for the living and deceased members of the Van Litt family, especially remembering Dina Van Litt and Peter Van Erp. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who for the relief of the poor and the formation of the clergy endowed the priest, St. Vincent de Paul, with apostolic virtues, grant, we pray, that a fire with that same spirit we may love what he loved and put into practice what he taught. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Rejoice, young man, while you are young, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Follow the inclination of your heart and the desire of your eyes. But know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. Banish anxiety from your mind and put away pain from your body, for youth and the dawn of life are vanity. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come and the years draw near, when you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened and the clouds return with the rain, in the day when the guards of the house tremble and the strong men are bent and the women who grind cease working because they are few and those who look through the windows see dimly when the doors on the street are shut and the sounds of the grinding is low and one rises up at the sound of a bird and all the daughters of a song are brought low when one is afraid of heights and the terrors are in the road, and the almond tree blossoms, and the grasshopper drags itself along and desire fails, because all must go to their eternal home. And the mourners will go about the streets before the silver cord is snapped and the golden bowl is broken and the pitcher is broken at the fountain and the wheel broken at the cistern, and the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the breath returns to God who gave it. Vanities of vanities, says the teacher, all is vanity. The word of the Lord. turn a 
us back to dust and say, Turn back, you mortals. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. them away, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed, in the evening it fades and withers. So teach us to count our days, that we may gain a wise heart. Turn, O oh Lord, how long have compassion on your servants. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While everyone was amazed at all that Jesus was doing, he said to his disciples, let these words sink into your ears. The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into human hands. But they did not understand this saying. Its meaning was concealed from them so that they could not perceive it. And the disciples were afraid to ask Jesus about this saying. The Gospel of the Lord. For the last couple of days, we've been reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. You'll also hear it referred to as Koheleth, its Hebrew name. Koheleth, the teacher or the preacher, had a pretty gloomy message. It was a message of the shortness of life and of really the the so little of life was worth while. It's not the gospel message. It's not the Bible's message, but it's a permanent part of that message. The Bible's message is full of joy and hope. But Kohath, or the Ecclesiastes, was writing at a time when many of the people were being taught that if you keep the law of God, you will have a prosperous life. And Ecclesiastes wasn't so sure. 
He said, I've been king in, in Jerusalem, and I got all that money could buy, and at the end, it, it didn't seem worth the effort because life is so short, and somebody else is going to get it. I won't take it with me. And then he said, and I went after all knowledge. I tried to learn everything there was to learn, and I learned so very much. And at the end, there was so much more to learn. And what I learned was that everything goes, happens over and over and over again. There's nothing new under the sun. And what we read today is particularly this message addressed to the young. He wasn't telling the young people, oh, to go out and do what you like. He was saying a sort of, oh, go ahead. Go ahead when you're long. Have fun. Do what you like. Do whatever you want. But remember, there'll be a day when you'll have to give an account to God for all the things you've done. And then he went into what is one of the finest pieces of writing in the Bible. Describe what it meant to get old. And he described getting old as though it were a big farm, a big estate falling into decay. And so the light seems to dim, and uh, the people who are supposed to protect the house were just so weak they were trembling, and they were the arms. And the people who were supposed to support the house, they were so strong, they were all twisted up. They were the legs. And the eyes couldn't see much anymore. They were the windows of the house. And the doors were shut, so he could look at the birds and see them, couldn't hear a sound of their singing. And on and on he went, until the golden bowl was broken. That is, life. That what holds life. The silver card was snapped, what ties us to the living. And then that cistern, that well, where you had the water that would keep you alive, you couldn't get to it. Everything was broken down, and you couldn't draw water. As a coincidence, this message of the shortness of life, the fact that everything is going to come to an end, is picked up in the gospel. When the disciples are having all this success, Jesus is having this great success, and he says, keep this in mind. The Son of Man is going to be betrayed. It's all going to come to a bad end. The message that this life, if you put your hope in this life, if you hope, put your hope in what is the best in this life, what you can get, money, what you can get, riches, what you can get, whatever success you can have, it's not going to last, and you're going to find out it's not going to be worth it. But then the gospel message, the message of the Bible, picks up on that cistern that's broken, doesn't hold any water, the bucket you can't draw out. And Jesus tells the woman at the well, if you ask me, I'll give you living water. Because there is something in life that makes it worth living. It's the pearl of great price. It's the treasure hidden in the field. It's to find God. Because God is the source of life. The source of eternal life. Finding God that pearl of great price, God. If you find God, and that's why Kohelet says, he says, when you're young, before all the, you get old, remember your creator. It's like St. Vincent de Paul, the saint today, and all the saints. They remembered their creator. They went after the one thing necessary, the one thing worthwhile. They found eternal life just in this life. They found it here. They found it because they found God, because they found our Lord. And that's what's offered to all of us, finding our Lord. Come to me, and I will give you rest. For my burden is light. My yoke 
is easy. Come to me. And so it is that when we go into the Eucharist, every Eucharist, every Mass we celebrate, here is that pearl of great price come down on the altar. It's come down to us. It is ours. We come, we receive the Eucharist. We hold in our hand that pearl that is worth selling everything for. And we eat it, and it becomes within us the spring of waters, eternal life, the source of eternal life, which is ours now and will be ours forever. Let us take a moment now to mention those intentions for which we wish to pray at this Eucharist. Let us pray first of all for the church throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all the peoples of the earth, for peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for this parish community, for those in the community joined with us through television, and especially, especially pray for all those intentions that they have written in asking us to pray for. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Most merciful and generous God, hear these prayers and answer them in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. My brothers and sisters, please pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who enabled St. Vincent to imitate what he celebrated in the divine mysteries, grant that by the power of this sacrifice, we too may be transformed into an oblation acceptable to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Vincent de Paul, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. So with all the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should have gone to my but only say the word, so shall be. Let us pray. Renewed by this heavenly sacrament, O Lord, we implore that just as we are prompted by St. Vincent's example to imitate your Son in his preaching of the gospel to the poor, so too we may be sustained by his prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks. Our thanks to Bert Van Liff from Bothwell, Ontario, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. On behalf of Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Fitzpatrick, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and all of us here at Daily Mass, our best wishes for a restful weekend. We'll be looking for you all again. Come on.